This was probably my favorite of the month. And I don't know why or how. Oh my god. It wasn't that painful, but... Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. So, today, we are going to be doing my January, February, and March reading wrap-up. This is gonna be a long one, so get comfy, grab a snack, grab a coffee, you know, whatever. I don't know exactly how many books this is. I want to say around 30. So, I'm gonna start with March because that's what is freshest in my brain and then we are gonna get to January at the end the books that I hopefully remember so let's get started with what I read in March I am gonna start off with the kiss deception trilogy if you do not know this is in the same world as the dance of thieves duology which this one is definitely more known I feel this series technically goes before it and it is in the same world so back in September, I actually read Dance of Thieves and I was kind of confused the whole time. Didn't really get it. You know what I mean? Like just like confused and felt like it would be a lot better if I understood it more. So recently I found out about this trilogy that you're technically supposed to read before Dance of Thieves, but like you don't have to. So I decided to read this and then go back and reread Dance of Thieves. It's basically about a princess. Her name is Leah. And she basically runs away from an arranged marriage. It's kind of her journey running away to like a small town. And then she meets two guys there. Basically, there's a love triangle. So it is pretty good. And you will love the characters in this series so much. I give this first book like 3.75. Oh, that hurt. It was kind of not action-packed a lot but it was still really good and I love the characters and then we have the second book which is the heart of betrayal but one thing about this series is in every single book there is like a journey that they go on that takes up like half of the book if that's just them on horses which is fine like if you love the characters it wasn't that painful but for me it was fine and then we have the last book which is the beauty of darkness if you asked me without without me looking at the books I would not be able to tell you the titles of these. I give this one a four star. This one was definitely the most action-packed. It's also 700-ish pages so yeah this one was definitely the best one. I, I do actually think about this world a lot. One thing about these books, would you guess that this book is 500 pages? No. Dance of Thieves is 500 pages by the same author. Look at that. So I don't know, these pages must be like super thin or something, but yeah. So as I said earlier, I wanted to reread Dance of Thieves and I did do that after I finished that trilogy and it did go better than the first time. I definitely think I understood it better. I gave this one a four stars. You don't have to read the Kiss Deception trilogy before. I recommend it though, honestly. So this is basically about a thief and she basically goes on a mission to she's part of the queen's guard and she goes on this mission to high in power family kind of far away and enemies to lovers like it's this is a really good book and then i went into vow of thieves and i definitely liked this one more i can't really tell you what it's about because it is a sequel but it is definitely more action-packed and it was really good. I loved the characters in this and you do get an appearance of the Kiss Deception series characters in this book and I loved that. And I rated Bow of Thieves a 4.25. Then I read The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. Um, Lynn Painter is definitely one of my favorite authors however this book didn't really go that amazingly and this book was just fast, fun, easy. About Oh, you could ask for in a rom-com. I mean, I did not know going into this that this is in the Mr. Wrong Number universe. But I liked that because I already knew the characters in that. So the premise of this rom-com is basically Hallie and Jack are both trying to find love on this dating app. Strike up a bet to see who finds love first. Whoever does gets something the other person has to offer. And it ends up 
they go on dates with other people and then after the dates don't go that well they get tacos together and kind of go on a date of their own. It was pretty good. I mean, it takes a lot for like a rom-com like this to be super memorable for me. So I'd give this a 3.5 stars. We are starting to get into where the month got pretty dang good. I read Shatter Me back a couple months ago. I did not love it. I did not love it. But I also listened to it on audiobook. So I didn't like retain the information as good it was like one of my first audiobooks it is basically a dystopian world where there is this thing called the reestablishment taking over where they're taking every all the books away all that and just like taking over the world and making it a pile of <laughs> our main girl juliet she has a lethal touch meaning she cannot touch anyone or they will die so it is super interesting there is some romance in it there's action there's really good characters that you'll come to love so that is awesome. This month I decided to continue the series because I was just in the mood for something fast paced, easy, breezy, fun, whatever. After reading Shower Me, you pick up Destroy Me, which is a little novella from a different character's perspective. I liked this. It was fine. Like it gave some insight about a character that was good to have. I mean, it made me like them even more. But again, it's a hundred page novella, not much to go off of. I'd give it like a three star. So then I read Unravel Me, which is technically the second book in the series. This did not go that good at first, honestly. I was almost going to DNF it. It was so hard to get into. At some points, Julia is just insufferable. But then we got about halfway through and another character came back into the story and all was redeemed. So I ended up giving this a 3.5 because... I although the other half, the second half was good, I can't really rate it higher than that if I was going to DNF it at first, you know what I mean? And then we get into Fracture Me, which is in the same novella bind up. And this is another character's perspective, one who I wasn't too fond of. Um, so I would give this a 2, 2.5 stars, something around there. Like, it was fine. We got some closure that was wanted slash needed, but it wasn't anything too memorable so i read ignite me so i loved this book throughout i would give it a four stars however the ending really fell super flat like they were working up towards it the entire book and then the big big thing at the end of the book took two pages two freaking pages maybe a little more but i, I exaggerate it was just over so quick there was like no real problems that happened during it i guess you could say like that just really kind of upset me because the whole the rest of the book was so good and definitely with this one you get more into the romance and i can't really tell you what this is about because it's like a spoiler for the whole series but i will be having a reading vlog of this so if you want to see that stay tuned and then the last book this month you guys this was probably my favorite of the month and i don't know why or how we have none other than Miss Magnolia Parks. Now, when I first got this book, I knew I was going to hate it or I was going to love it. There was going to be no in between. And if you, can, if you can't tell by my face, I ended up loving it somehow. And I am someone who I do not like to read about toxic love. Like the Twisted series, I bought all four books, read the first one, didn't vibe with it sold the other books after I had bought them so that says a lot that I liked this book so if I would have read this probably four years ago I would have spiraled out of control and like it would have been terrible but now that I'm in a great relationship it was it was perfect I loved this I am someone I eat up when there's drama especially relationship drama I'm just like and that was the same with one of the Shatter Me books. I think it was Unravel Me. There was just drama after drama and I'm like, keep it coming. I don't really want to recommend this. This book is basically about a toxic as heck relationship in high society London. Everyone compares it to Gossip Girl. These two are just so toxic, but they love each other so much. And it's just a bunch of their back and forth, their friend group, other love interest. And it is just 
amazing. I actually DNF'd this book for about a month. So I started this towards the end of February. I got 30 pages in. I put it down. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. I just got the urge to pick it up because, you know, it was on my Goodreads saying currently reading when I'm not currently reading it. So I just wanted to finish it. Start it again flew through this. I read this in two to three days, this thick brick. Then we will get on to my February reads. This was another series heavy month. I started off the month reading the Caraval trilogy, Caraval, Caraval. Basically the premise of this book, it's just like a really magical world and there's a magical game. There's mysteries, riddles, puzzles, all of that. And it was a super cool world and idea. I loved that part of it. However, something about it just didn't hit. Another thing about this, it made me hyper fixate on watching The Greatest Showman. Like, I was just thinking about watching that movie. I was listening to the soundtrack. I don't know why, but it just did. Like, this book was good. I'd give it a 3.5 stars. It wasn't amazing, but it was super fun. So I do recommend it and just the idea of it is so so cool. Legendary which is the second book of this series. Keeping with that idea it is also like games, riddles, it is a different POV than the first one. So it is super interesting and this series is just it's so magical and good like it may not be like a five star to you it is definitely still worth a read because it is just so magical and yeah i gave this one a four stars one thing i really liked about this book is at the end of it you get a little section and it has stephanie garber's little annotations for when she wrote it and then we have finale which i'd give another 3.5 stars I feel like this is everyone's overall favorite, but I don't even remember what happened in this one, to be honest. Same thing with this magic games, vibes, all that. And then we get into the Once Upon a Broken Heart duology. Now, this is by the same author set in the same world as Caraval. You are technically supposed to read Caraval before. A lot of people say it's not recommended, but honestly, I liked the Caraval series enough to tell you guys to read it because it was just so magical, so many good vibes, and just the world was just so cool. And this pro the idea of the story was just so, so interesting. So I do recommend doing that. And there is a little bit of crossover with the character names, which isn't a huge deal, but I mean, I'd recommend reading it. So this book is about a completely different character. I will say this is definitely easier to understand than the Caraval series. There was a mystery aspect in this and I wrote down in my notebook that the pacing was sometimes a little bit too fast, too slow, too fast, too slow. Kind of like back and forth. Overall this book is so good. I give this one a four stars and the premise of it is basically about Evangeline. She basically is dealing with the love of her life marrying someone else. Basically she is heartbroken obviously and she makes a deal with essentially the devil or in this case a fate in exchange for his help obviously wants something from her and then we have the second one this one was even better i would give this a 4.25 4.5 stars there is crumbs literal crumbs of romance in this but you're like literally be together already like you just want them to be together so bad but then you get crumbs so there is some plot twists, more mystery aspects, and that's all I'll tell you without spoiling it, you know, but read this. Then I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, one of my first high fantasy, adult fantasy, darker fantasy books, and it was really good. I mean, I gave this a four stars. It did take me a while to get into, but it was really good. The ending was incredible, and just some of the fantasy elements of this story were so good. So, so basically the premise is Mia Covered. She is wanting to be an assassin or a blade. So she is on a journey to this school for assassins slash blades. And it's basically just her story there and what she has to do to become one. I loved that. It was so, so good. And she also has a little shadow pet. It's a cat, Mr. Kinsley. He, that aspect is just so cool. And next... I read Begin Again by Emma Lord. I love Emma Lord. She's a great YA romance author. Um, I give this book a 3.75 stars. I read this really fast in one or two days. 
I just I just have a hard time fully clicking with rom-com romances like this like it takes a lot to be amazing but this one was really good and there was a good amount of other plot rather than just the romance which I liked and there's kind of some mystery stuff she's trying to figure out more about her mom and just it's fun and there's drama too he is a freshman in college and she has a boyfriend they are doing long distance she's thinking about transferring to his college and all of that then she kind of like becomes friends with her RA and her roommate and it's just like her story, a romance, just like college life, all that. It's fun. And then I got sick. This was the only thing my brain could handle. I just wanted to fly through a series, just no plot, just vibes essentially. So I picked To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I've definitely read this in middle school probably. I'd give them all like a three to four stars, you know what I mean? Like they're not life- changing in any way but they are something I will continue to reread because it's just such a good palate cleanser and if you are sick or just having a bad day this is perfect and will cheer you up so good and then you can watch the movies on Netflix after premise of these it is basically about Laura Jean who um she has written letters to all the boys she's loved before and they accidentally get mailed one day so all of the boys she wrote letters about get them and realize that she loved them and all of that and there's fake dating romance all of that the other books they're kind of just like coming of age like high school senior type stuff so now we're gonna get into what i read in january the first book of the year that i read is one day in december i read this on like the first of the year because i was like if i don't read this like now i'm never gonna it's called one day in december so it's like you gotta read it in December. No, you don't have to, but like it just makes most sense. It was okay. I didn't really love the main love interest in this book. This was a three star read. This book is basically about our girl Lori. One day in December, she sees this dude from the train window and she's just like, oh my god, I love him. Can you tell I didn't really love this book? <laughs> And she's just obsessed with him, thinks about him all the time, tells everyone about him, all this and that. One day, her friend introduces her to her new boyfriend, and the friend's boyfriend is Train Guy. And then I read better than the movies. As I said earlier, I love Lynn Painter, especially her YA books. And this one was incredible. I gave this five effing stars, you guys. The premise of this book is Liz recruits her neighbor Wes to help her get her crush. I loved this book so much. I really related to a lot of the things that Liz did, her interest, all of that. And it was adorable. And I will always remember what the love interest did for her. And just like... And then I read The No Show by Beth O'Leary. I don't know what was into me. I don't really read this much romance in a month ever. So the premise of this book is this dude stands up three different girls all on valentine's day so it's like kind of a mystery aspect if you're trying to figure out why he did that how it happened and all that and the reveal was pretty good i honestly didn't know what the hell to expect so it was kind of surprising to me um i could see how it could be predictable but it was fine i just wasn't super in love with this i'd give it like a 3.25 stars and then i read a court of silver flames i read the akatar series towards the end of last year i absolutely loved it so i was super excited to read this one however i didn't love it as much as the first three because it is told in a different pov than the first three books and i can say i enjoyed the first three's pov more however this book it it was still really good it did take me a while to read and i just didn't feel like it was as action-packed as the other books in the series or as action-packed as i wanted it to be i guess it was definitely more a character focused book and i did love a lot of things about this book so i would give it a four stars i definitely loved the new characters we saw the character development and then the last book i have for you guys is the flat chair again by beth o'leary I love this cover. I was super excited for this book. I'm not going to lie. I definitely had high expectations and they weren't necessarily disappointed, but I did expect more from this. This book is basically about Tiffy and Leon and 
they share an apartment however they have never met before so they're both living in the same apartment sleeping in the same bed but they are not there at the same times ever so they don't know each other they start leaving notes notes for each other around the house and that's their way of like communicating which is super cute and obviously they meet eventually and then the romance starts um i give this like a 3.5 stars like it was cute but nothing too memorable so yes so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it give it a big thumbs up comment down below what your favorite book of the month or the year so far has been and i'll see you guys next time bye